103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 7th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Shoot from the hip. We always do. And our guests today are George Brown, the two and a half. Uh, How are you? Originally from Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm fine. And we have Dread Pirate all the way from Canada. Hello, Dread. Ahoy there. Nice. And the John Richards from England. Uh, what part of England are you in? London, I think. Is that right? <clears throat> That's my other... house there. That's uh, Arundel Castle, which is in <laughs> West, West Sussex, which is on the south coast. Mm, okay, cool. Welcome. The Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. That's so many. And can, conversely, Excuse me, my ice maker went off there. Conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, then well, you're just wrong. In Knoxville, we have a group of over a thousand of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll tell you more about the ASK or Atheist Society of Knoxville after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Why am I wearing underwear if this is a finely tuned universe? And all the other problems with that argument. Good question. Yeah, good question. But before we get into it, I'm going to throw it to throw in Dread Power Higgs for our weekly invocation. All right. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog, whenever and ever. Gary, I love the passion. I love the passion on that one. That was so good. I like that. That was probably the best rendition yet. Guys, I have some bad news. Oh, go ahead, John. Go on. I have a confession. Yeah. I didn't close my eyes in the invocation. It's okay. There's enough there's enough noodles. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oftentimes the pastor doesn't. So there you go. There's there's That's invocation. Right. Got some bad news, everybody. There's no better sign that fall or summer is over than when Larry has stopped wearing his fancy shirts. So he just has the uh, muted I'm colors the and gray, gray, gray yeah. and, and slightly off gray panel shirts. Uh, mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed your summer. It's over. And I can tell it's really, really yeah. cold out. Uh, guys, speaking of which, so cold, but I hope you guys are having fun. Let's do a quick catch up. See how everybody's been. John, what have you been up to now that it's no longer summer anymore? Well, it's barely noticeable. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> the leaves haven't fallen yet. The weather's still mild. It's not gone below 10 degrees, which in your land would be 40, no, 50. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm still going about in my shirt. Mind you, it helps to have an electrically heated seat in your car. Yes. I remember when I got that for the first time. It was one of the best things. They even have electrically heated steering wheels. Which I think they, like, the well, next I level is just cool. No, I haven't gone that far. They got <laughs> motorcycles that have heated handlebars. I think that's kind of awesome too. Larry, now what your you queen on? came. Your queen came here to the United States, and we had to provide her with electrically heated toilet seats. Really? Do you remember really? that? I find that hard yes. to believe. <laughs> it's true. Well, surely, make this surely just mink clad would have done. <laughs> Those I never got. It's it like find electrically heated toilet anytime seats. Anytime I need to use a toilet seat, I need to immediately sit on a toilet seat and not wait for it to heat up. <laughs> and if I'm ever sitting on one, it's a solid problem in a couple <laughs> yeah. of minutes. I don't understand. Do you know, do you know you've, shattered, you've shattered an illusion now because I didn't think the queen pooed. That's right. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not regal, is it? Sure, sure, nope. sure. No. Sure. Larry, how you been? What, how's your fall turning uh, out? Fine. Brought the motorcycle in, and nice. uh, it's 
put up for the winter, brought yeah. the uh, plants plants in from the deck. So, you know, it's it's definitely getting there. It's nice not to be sweltering hot outside, although we did have a month or so there of really nice weather. Right. But it's cool, for sure. Yeah. We get like two you know, good... time changed last night. Sure did. Sure did. We're going to get into that. Trust me. But like mm -hmm. we got two good months of weather each year in Tennessee. And that's when you get the transitions from the really hot to the really cold. And it's beautiful out every day. But then, you know, when we're in winter's come and we're getting ready for the snow. Let's go. Right. Gary, who knows better than snow than you? Uh, how, how, what are you, what's your anticipations coming up for winter over there? I mean, you're no longer having that heat wave, right? Are you, is there going to be a cold? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we're looking forward to the cold snap coming up here in about a month. Um, Galena mountain is to the South of me. It's actually in, in America, oh, cool. um, because we're saddled right up against the border. Uh, and Galena has, has had its first permanent snow on the top. Yes. which is a sign that winter has arrived. Okay. So that's now, a good thing. I want to show this to the court, but you did say Lena mountains in America as in not in Canada. Is that accurate? That is correct. Yes. How many times have I been corrected by a Can Canadian when I said it's an America and then they say, we're America too. <laughs> we are America too. Like, but it's, I, you guys know what I meant. It's like, no, no, no. You meant you when you said America. We're also America. It's like, fine, yeah, fine, 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 fine. Yeah. My, my farm, I have a farm, <laughs> me and my dad, we have a tree farm and it is actually right up against uh, the, the border. Okay. So we're as close to the border as you can get. Cool. In America. Mm. Fred? Yes. How's the plans for the border wall coming along? <laughs> it's already up. Yeah. It's just, you can't see it. You just can't see it. <laughs> you it's a new see technology. It you won't it's see a it new technology. Yeah. Like, where that, where um, that laser beam come I, from? I, I, I do want to mention that I'm, I'm on a, a weight loss thing here. I lost in the last month, I lost uh, 19 pounds. Wow. Congrats. Oh, yeah. Wow. Good job. Good so, for you. Uh, I'm going to do that again, and then I should be where I want to be. <laughs> okay, 19 nothing, pounds. Yeah, not to tie into your life, but like, isn't that like 10% of your body weight right now? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how are you doing? Well, actually, it's pretty close. It's pretty close to 10%. Yeah. Yeah. 19 uh, pounds. Exercise or just diet? Yes, 19 pounds. Yeah. Let, yeah. Okay. So actually, John Richards, I, I, I don't get me started watchers, on the metric so. system because we'll have this argument if you really want to have it. But pounds are the unit for weight. If you want to talk about mass, if you want to talk about mass, we can talk about mass, but there's a reason why America has a space program and England doesn't. Okay. That's right. We, All right. we yeah. do now, actually. Pounds. 19 pounds. Yeah, 19 you pounds, want... Dredd. You want to get the hole in your pocket sewn up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, lost 19 pounds. I get it. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right, all right. That could have gone a lot of different ways, but I'm glad it went that Indeed. way. Oh, boy. George Brown, what's up? How you been? Well, um, I got my COVID shot, my third one, on Friday, and I've been pretty miserable from that. So I've been miserable from something else that I want to share with you all. Talk to me. Which is this. I go on food binges every once in a while, and I have gone on a food binge with matzah. Okay. What is the word Don't. on that thing? Man oh, it says Manischewitz. That's the brand name. Wow. I've never I've this, heard that word, but I've never seen it. Spelled now, it. now this, is, this is unofficial matzah. This is not for Passover or anything else because mm. it's it's got um, spices and salt and um, uh, poppy seeds, I think. It's, it's very it's yummy. It's, it's I OD'd on I OD'd on this. Now, this is unleavened stuff. Mm. I got to tell you, this is like eating lead balls. You got to stop ODing on the matzo. Red balls? <laughs> lead, 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 balls, lead, lead, oh, lead balls. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I paid for that binge. John, what's up? You got a little Don't power on your do it. occasion. What's do it? not OD on matzah. We won't. We won't. Yes, John, what's up? I, it's not on my thing. This is this is uh, poppy poppy day because it's next week. <laughs> the, parade oh. go, the parade will go past this house. Now I have an actual question. Is that an actual flower? Did your daughter draw that for you? <laughs> is that a sticker that your daughter drew? Yeah, you can you can buy these in the street. Mm. It's oh. one of the ones with the pin, you know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the all cross. new information for me. Guys, I have been waking up at one Good hour for early for the last two weeks, preparing my body 
for what I think is one of the dumbest holidays in American culture, period, that I wish we, including Canada, just for, for, yes. <laughs> for the argument of Canadians out there, but I think a lot of the other parts of the world do this too. I wish we would stop. I wish we would get rid of it, but it's daylight yep. savings time where effectively in fall, we move forward one, or we fall behind one hour or fall forward. We fall yep. forward one hour. Fall back. Fall back. Fall, fall, back. Fall, back. fall back. We fall back. Whatever it is, I lose an hour of sleep. Is that accurate? No, you, gain, no, you gain an hour. You gain oh, well, then I, my whole circadian rhythm is slowly messed up. <laughs> That's my thing. No, this is why I hate about it. This is what I hate about it. This is what I hate. So you say I get an extra hour of sleep, but basically you're saying I also don't have anything I can do in the sunlight after I'm done with work. Because now right. when I get That's out it. of work, it's pitch black dark it's and I can't go to the park. I can't go for walking. I can't yeah. play disc golf. I have to figure out, I either have to wake up extra early so I can get off an extra hour later or earlier so that I can have time with the sun or deal with it until february comes up dread what's up there are actually uh, in bc here anyway there are communities that have opted out of it yeah and yeah so like golden uh, they choose not to abide by it so um yeah it's a good thing to push for i mean it's an artifact of our agrarian culture right to walk so, me through it why do we have that get rid of it history? well it's because of the you know the harvest time and all that kind of yeah. stuff is but, but it, it why just, in hell do we do this, really? Why do we do it? Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was what, because... What is the reason? Like, that, you know, I thought agrarian was like summer vacation, but also like, hey, if you only have candles in your home, here's like a good way to not have to spend so much money on candles. We'll just all wake up a little earlier in time with the sunrise, and now we have more wax for stuff. If we all agree to this, mm -hmm. we'll all save money on candles. We're all in agreement? Yep. Great. But now we got LEDs. Pretty much it. Now I got, now I got, you know, incandescent lamps. Now we got solar panels. Now we have so many different ways of properly lighting indoors of buildings, but we haven't even updated this policy. It's kind of bizarre. George, what's up? I saw you raise your hand. Well, first of all, I want to say that for, for now, a dread pirate is now correct when he says standard time, because we are in standard time. Yeah. But um, I had to learn this when I, back when I was doing radio work, <clears throat> I had to announce the time change. Mm -hmm. And so it has been engraved in my brain now for, for eternity. Spring ahead, fall back. Yeah. But it could just as easily be spring back, fall forward. So, like, no, it's, it's one of those terrible mnemonic devices that, like, doesn't could easily miss. Well, but that's it's it's that's hard what hard. I had to that's what I had to announce, and so it, it stayed trying. in my mind. But the whole thing is so stupid, you yeah. know. Like the rest of you, I spent an hour this morning setting my clocks. As a matter of fact, I still have. Oh, some I can't even bother doing that. Set. I'm doing one oh, at a time. Larry, what's up? I was just going to say, I did a quick look up on YDST, and it said the, the nominal reason for daylight savings time was to save energy. It was first changed and instituted during World War One, ah. and then instituted again during World War Two as part of the war effort. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, whole world's yeah, going to save fuel. Money. That's I'm just reading that, so I, I stand corrected. John, fact, what's up? During World, world War Two, we had summertime all the year round, and when it came to summer, we had double summer time. Hmm. Really? Uh, Why was that? Two hours, two hours ahead of. Oh, crazy. so what was the re what was the reason for that, John? Daylight saving, yeah, so that uh, we didn't need to consume fuel to light our way in the dark. So in we fact, wouldn't have to do that if the universe was actually fine-tuned for so us. No, so no, let, <laughs> let me tell you how I can, thank nice you, Larry. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Larry. I was, trying, I was trying to get there. But like, here's my thing. If that's I live in a world where I have to do daylight savings time, let's just pretend that's the universe we're in. I'm not even gonna come up with the World War II one excuse, but thank you very much for bringing it up, Larry. I should be able to mm -hmm. set my clock internally to whatever the external clock is. Why do I have to wake up groggy or extra tired every single day? Why do we have to live in a world that if it's finely tuned for me, has our daylights completely off balances where no one can have like a consistent, you know, after school curriculum or after work curriculum, or depending on how old you are, just things that you can do when you're not working or, or whatever you're having fun with the same amount of daylight every day so that you can have like consistent see in your life. Yeah, you know, we could be in a binary system where we have two suns and never get dark. Yeah, oh. we could we could be on Tatooine. 
Yeah, yeah. We could have just had like really nice eye flaps over our head that like actually block out all light so we can go to sleep properly. That's right. Or just get used to well, sleeping in the sunlight. What? There's so many things that we could have done to fine tune this universe better yes. than it is now. If and you it's... peeled the earth like an orange yeah. and flattened it out, hmm. that, you know, flat earth, that would be perfect. We'd all sure. share the same, same day and night exposure. And mm -hmm. while we're still going on to this round, tangent i still have the underlying fundamental issue that i have with the fine-tuned universe i still have nipples and i don't know why <laughs> i don't understand if god was made in my image why he has nipples and i don't understand why i got nipples there's twice as many nipples as there need to be on earth and no one's figured this out uh -huh. well, that was my mind what's up john <clears throat> well there have been a few <laughs> Medically verified cases of okay. men lactating when for what the mother, purpose? For what when purpose, the mother John? when the mother dies and the baby's left hungry? When I've run out of cream for my coffee. In oh, a fine tuned universe, <laughs> <laughs> in a fine universe, it would be an available Walmart with a with a pay park, pay park, uh, prepaid card in my pocket. There you go. That's. I mean, let's 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 get to the nuts and bolts. We're talking about fine tuning in this uh, episode, and gripes. And the need for have. underwear. Yeah, and the need for <laughs> underwear. Why am I wearing underwear if this is a fine tuned universe? Uh, why? What is fine tuning? Why are we bringing it up? Maybe we should start with basics. Uh, John, have you ever heard of the fine tuning argument? I mean, you mind walking us through it? Yes, I have. It's, and I've also heard of the refutations like the puddle that thinks this hole is, must be made for me right. because it's such a perfect fit. Yep. Yes. <laughs> this, this is, uh, there is, there's no evidence that anything was, when you assume that fine tuning is a thing. What is fine tuning? What are you referring to? Just, just help us out from the very the, beginning. The universal constants being within the ranges that they are. Hmm. Okay. And that if they weren't, uh, the yes. universe would not exist as we know. So like fine-tuned dials to make sure that life on Earth, yes. specifically yes. here, is just for us to exist oh, and have yeah. a happy life. So, so if you're making that claim, hmm. then you're assuming, first of all, that the constants are tunable. Hmm. And they aren't, you know, that's why we call them constants. Or that there's a tuner, which really, really coalesces exactly. with the religious yeah, yeah. belief, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what they want. That's what the, why the theists love the fine-tuning argument, because right. it means that there's somebody with their fingers on the sliders, an agent <laughs> <laughs> that, that's doing it. A little disco yeah. tech guy is like, all right, exactly. it's your time. <laughs> Turn your clocks forward or backwards. I don't know. I'm having a fun yeah. time. Yeah. Confetti yeah, yeah. smoke exactly. machine. Yeah. John, why do you hate this argument? so much well as i said there's there's no evidence that the the fine that the constants are tunable hmm. they are just what they are you know and we've we've called them constants because they are values that we've measured right and and, and they don't and can't change indeed yes so there's no cannot, tuning happened and there's not be any other value exactly right. yes so, so it's it's an it's a non-claim the the issue I specifically have with this on top of that, John, is that not only is it no evidence to support fine tuning, but it also flies in the direct contradiction of what the scientific perspective is, is that no, this universe isn't fine tuned from as far as we can tell. In fact, this universe hates life for the most part. And we're yes. actually quite fortunate that we're in the place that we are yeah. right now. Yes. Yeah, you, you, if any of this changes, yes. which it's bound yeah. to, we're not going to yeah. be around for a long time. So we better start figuring out how to get along with each other and make yeah. ships that go to other places where we can also survive because resources yeah. are all right. Yeah. yeah. Dread, dread comes dread. next, but I'm, there's something I want to come back with later after you, sure. Dread. Dread. Okay. Go. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it seems to be just another, um, uh, expansion of this helio, you know, or uh, anthrocentric, oh yeah, um, Egotistic. viewpoint uh, or view of the world, and it's just, I mean, first it was the Earth and the solar system, and you know the galaxy, and 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 now it's just thrown out to the universe. It's just an ever expanding bubble, right? Uh, John, what's up? Well, the other th aspect to it is, if you do assume that it, the constants are tunable. Mm -hmm. then you've got to assume that they have been set with an intention. Mm -hmm. And right. this intention mm -hmm. was formed nearly 14 billion years ago. And it's quite difficult to imagine that 
at that time, there was enough knowledge of what might happen in the future for the intention to stand a chance of coming true. I right. mean, it's like, it's like saying that my great, 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 great grandfather married my great, 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 I've forgotten how many grandmother with the intention of producing me right. generations right. later as, as right. an offspring and ignoring the fact that there were going to be all sorts of events that were unpredictable in the gap. Right. It's a, it's a, that's a, that's a brilliant way of playing it. Um, man, George, I would like to have your feedback on the idea of what John just said. Like, is it possible that you know what you're going to have for breakfast 14 years from now <laughs> or like <laughs> next month? Like the, ga- the idea that you can plan something now for with such an incredible gap. Seems it'd like be such an extreme so. gambit. Yeah. It'll be mad so, won't it? But, yeah, what a terrible way of planning things. The Lord works in mysterious <laughs> ways. <laughs> he knows the phrases now. Guys. To get, now to get to <laughs> I was once faced with the challenge of having to tune a French harpsichord for a recording session. Okay. And Oh my God! The fr- the French, you know, are known to f- to do nothing like anybody else in terms of design, mm-hmm. and nobody does anything like the French. And th- this harpsichord, we're talking about tuning. Um, this harpsichord had two tuning pins for each string, a coarse one and a fine one. Yeah, I could not tune that instrument. It was my downfall as a harpsichord technician. <laughs> Tuning things oh. is difficult. It's basically, it's very, very complicated. Well, I mean, this was like, I had never seen this before, and I had to live up to a reputation that that preceded me, and I couldn't do it. I, I mean, I couldn't even hear this instrument, and, and it was so strange. But but what I'm getting at is, is um, the concept of tuning. Mm. We are in agreement as a society that we will tune to a certain standard. Mm. And I think that rock music has um, helped, like, enforce a standard worldwide Mm. for tuning instruments. Because before that, yeah. I think you're on a a brilliant point, because why even bother tuning a universe when you could have made it perfect at the very beginning? Like if you were planning it out 14 billion years. Part of of what I was going to say, yeah. Why make a harpsichord that goes out of tuning when it could have just been an electric harpsichord that sounded just as good as the real thing and you you never have to tune it? Or some other, if you're a higher power, just make the thing not go out of tune. Just make a universe that doesn't go out of tune, God. It's like that's that right, you yeah. had all the options at the beginning. You're all powerful. What are you doing? Well, right. I think I, I think that the thing that the thing that we like about authentic acoustical instruments is the fact that they are buggy. They are imperfect because they're made out of imperfect materials. Yep. The electronic instruments are too perfect. Yeah. They are consistent. <laughs> Yeah. So we get, well, so we got, you, you, go on ahead, Dred. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you can even think about a guitar, you can tune it down mm. or you can tune it up do, depending yep. on the kind of sound you want to produce. So yeah, anyway, but exactly. I was going to say, no, no, right. I was going to say you can tune a harpsichord, but you can't tune a fish. Exactly. <laughs> God could. Uh, God could. I love it. But he's not doing it. So now we got fish with legs and we got fish with gills. And lungs <laughs> That's and right. Like, what am I doing on the land? This makes no sense. I'm going to have to like use evolution to like make legs and all this other stuff. But yeah. and Larry, why would he make a world that relied on evolution to, to, to fit us to fit humans to this environment when he could have made us out of titanium or something? Yes, so it's that all we could about live magic, in the, right? In exactly. space or at, at the bowels of the earth or whatever uh you know and travel between the art uh the stars yeah it, um, you, you, oh man not... you just you just tripped on something really terrible because if you have christians that believe in fine-tuning but also don't believe in evolution so that they can stay happy with that scenario that mm-hmm. you brought up because some yeah. christians just don't believe in evolution yet they believe mm-hmm. in fine-tuning which is small changes yeah. hopefully over a grand period of time what is the definition of evolution? Isn't it literally that? Isn't that the third pillar of biology? Right. You can't have yeah. one or the other. I'm going back to my rant with yeah. the guy with the Confederate flag and the American flag on the same bumper. It's like those two <laughs> things don't aren't compatible with each other. Pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Larry. And um 
it's not that they they don't want to believe in evolution. They can't believe in evolution because the the, God, the perfect word of God says that uh, humans were created whole the way we are now in His image. So if they if they do fold and, and accept evolution, then they have to throw that part out of the window. Yep. If there's no Garden of Eden, then there's no original sin. If right. there's no sin, then there's no need for Jesus to have died. It, the whole thing crumbles. whole thing crumbles, and then they're left with a lot of fear, unresolved fear with death, right. and a lot of questions that they never had a chance to properly think about or answer or contend with. John. Right. I, I just want to clear up something that George said earlier about acoustic instruments and why uh -oh. we like them so much, because the same, the voice is an acoustic instrument. Sure and, is. And the reason that choirs sound so good and the, the reason that we do double tracking of our own voice on a recording is because we love the thickness that going in and out of phase mm. gives it. It also hides up some good mistakes too. But yeah, <laughs> it's a good way. Yeah. Guys, I think we're at the bottom of the half. Larry, is that accurate? Oh, pretty close. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. It was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria every Tuesday night about 5.30. Come down and look for us out there on the patio. Uh, if you'd like to join our Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, let's say you can't get out, you don't want to get out, it's cold, or you live out of town, uh, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and, and we'll be more than happy to include you in our meeting. Uh, all are welcome. You can find Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Facebook, meetup.com, um, I'm sorry, ASK, or knoxvilleatheists.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheists, and you can uh, find us there. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Star one. one. That's right. One bet where you want to pick up. Guys, there's a great YouTube channel called Prehistoric Tools and Prehistoric Stories, where it's essentially people building things using prehistoric tools, but there's no commentary. It's literally guy with a bowl who's just digging in the dirt, and then you skip to the end of the video, and all of a sudden he has like a swimming pool with like fountains spewing into him. And you're like, how did he build that with just a bowl? And if you go step by step, you can see him building, using a bowl to make like a, a clay thing, and then using the clay thing to have a fire kiln, and then using the fire kiln to like drop metals in, and like make actual hard metal based tools and using those metal based tools to like dig deeper holes and then carving <laughs> everything immaculately like how it needs to be in order to make a swimming pool and when you watch it from the very beginning of the show sometimes it's as silly as like guy planting seeds in the ground and like and you're like what the hell is going on here and at the end he has a sandwich and you're like oh i get it from beginning to end yeah, I want to touch on something that John was talking about, like making things with intention. Like there's a scope where it starts being really, really silly. Like the further out you're looking ahead of the things that you're about to make. And yeah, when you consider that God made, if God made, and God probably did it, let's be honest, 14 billion years ago, try to make this that we're in right now with the with the concepts of like well let me make gravity this and let me make heat this and enthalpy this and entropy that and it'll come out to people with the internet talking about me in the future and, and praising me in small churches all around this one little blue planet and it's then, a bizarre thing john what's up and then he was prepared to wait 13.8 however many hundreds of millions of years until we turned up because we've only been around for about, I don't know, 300,000 years. Right, he, right. He was it's a very the most patient bizarre guy. YouTube channel possible. It's the most bizarre YouTube <laughs> live stream possible. It's like, it's called Wait For It, the God podcast. Yes. It's just like, yes. wait for it. Wait, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yes. What did it pay off to? Like, to get to this after 13.8 billion years to have one planet like this 
being like, mm. God is so good. He's so good. You could have made Christian music at least even better. Like the lyrics are terrible. Come on, <laughs> Larry, what's up? Oh, and all of that leads up to where we are now, which we expect Jesus to come back next week and destroy, destroy the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah. <laughs> I mean uh, you talk to any uh, evangelical Christian and they're going to tell you that Jesus is due. And when he comes, it's going to uh, th- be a thousand years of, I don't know, Satan rule on earth. And then it's going to just burn. I right. mean, that's the whole buildup to it. Yeah. Gary, go on ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to, I'm, I'm, I think about my, my, other family members who are all Christian and some more so than others. Mm -hmm. And just thinking, you know, the idea that you could be happy in heaven, knowing that your atheist father is burning in hell. Like, you know, how do you reconcile that? How do you think I I feel with my mom? You know, it's just like, my mom wants to go to heaven. She knows I'm an atheist. She knows I'm definitely not going to be a Jehovah witness. If if I was going to be any religion, it'd be like some weird Pastafarian? Weird, yeah. I'd be Pastafarian probably there you go. or Janus or something like that. But like, mm-hmm. it is a, it's a sincerely baffling concept that someone can be happy knowing that their son's not, anyone could be happy in paradise, knowing that there's a place that's not paradise where people are internally suffering. Like anybody who's in heaven isn't good enough to be in heaven if they're okay with a hell. Like, right. So in my head, either heaven's empty or has like one crazy person in it. <laughs> heaven is filled with sociopaths, right? But, well, just yeah. one, just they one crazy care. sociopath. Cause that's to be perfect for everybody. And it can only be perfect for one person. That's to be perfect for yeah. everybody. Right. If you look at it as someone who is creating the religion, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, it creates a template where not only do you have to be in the church, but everybody that you love has to be in the church and you have to put pressure on them to get them in the church, you know, because you don't want to see them burn. Yeah. It it turns the burden on the believer to convince everyone around them and not Mm -hmm. the idea of God should have had better messaging. Cause literally if I had better messaging, I'd be able to make a weighted decision on if this is some better evidence. It's my time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Mm -hmm. devil had it. Devil knows that a God exists yet. He's Mm -hmm. not going to heaven. So give me at least that same evidence. I can come up with it myself. George, what's up? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking to me? I'm talking yeah. to you. What's up? <laughs> you're talking to me? I don't see anyone else here. You're talking to me. Anyone else over here? Well, you know, I'm, I'm doubly damned in this country because I'm Jewish, for one thing. That makes me an outsider. And the second thing is I am an atheist. So I'm a Jewish atheist. I'm doubly damned. And... Mm-hmm. Therefore, I don't know what you guys are talking about because you're all Christians at birth, and um, no, it's all we were very never weird. Christian at birth. We were raised Christians from birth. We were we were born without a right. religion. We were indoctrinated into right. it at a young we were born age. Okay, atheist. see, correct. Yeah. So uh, my my question, not not knowing about this, is um, if 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 I'm an official, let's see. If I'm an official Southern Baptist, okay, is somebody who is an unofficial Baptist going to go to hell because they're not in my church? Depends on which church you go to. You're going to hear a different thing in almost every single different church. To just count the number of Cadillacs the pastor has. Yeah, that's your best intention. I would say this. I find the idea that the Christian narrative for how the universe was made with fine-tuning to be a really sad and depressing format for how to explain the universe because i found every single instance that fiction is never as incredible as fact we can make up something and have a really cool story but when we go to the actual facts of the matter when we actually look at the universe and see how expansive it is and how little we do know and the amazing things we still can discover every day i am overwhelmed with how amazing facts are compared to any sort of fiction and when i hear well, there was a God 14, million year, 14 billion years ago, and he decided all the concepts and, and the factors and the knobs to make the universe where this earth exists, and now we're mm. existing here. I find that to be a, such an, not an unpalatable uh, story, but just a boring story compared lame. to what the yeah. reality is, where it's just like, listen, we don't even know how this stuff started, but here's some theories. And then at best, we have this giant, bang of an explosion energy bursting out everywhere 
matter condensing from <laughs> immaterial space to finally getting where these planets are forming and, 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 and stars are exploding and making heavier particles and coming back together. We got fission. We have planets that are slowly turning into gas giants and then condensing into like solids for the first time. We have comets flying through space where there's glycine molecules. They're get, they, they got water contents and they're landing on planets and all of a sudden you have like simple amino acids and then you have RNA and then you have an RNA world theory. And then all of a sudden you have like DNA and it's still evolving even now, like you can find or microorganisms that are still, hey, have you guys upgraded DNA? DNA, yeah, it's like, yeah, we've done that like millions of years ago. Catch up, guys. It's like, nah, 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 we're good, we're good. It's an amazing thing to like right now have a snapshot of like all the, uh, <clears throat> the eukaryotes and probiotics. Pro um, pro pro prokaryotes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and then mm -hmm. us like walking around and there's still microbes inside of us, like mitochondria that like mm -hmm. are used to be their own organisms, but now have their yeah. own little DNA cell. And you're just like, whoa, every cell in my body is like technically two things that you suggest hang out with each other. And then with like very permeable cell walls, they like now hang out. And that's just the start. That's just the start of how crazy this world is. Every mm -hmm. single thing is amazing and so open to discovery yet. I feel like Christians wanting to accept the story of a fine tuned universe and the way things are. It's such a bizarre condition because it mm, just lacks it lacks imagination <laughs> it lacks yeah. so much compared to what the things actually are george exactly. what's up well if i if i can re, if i can paraphrase what you just said hmm. um how i interpreted it was that uh fact in other words reality is much more diverse and much more interesting hmm. Um, than the alternative, which is very rigid mm. and confining. Yes. And I think that what I'm dealing with here to understand it is an understanding that um, it's natural for people to want things to be familiar a lot. Right. It's and comforting. The familiar is comforting. And, and, simple. and what's simple. that? And simple. Yes. And simple. Yes. 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 Yeah. And which is less. And I think that there's something there's something within us that likes this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a childlike. Comfort. The unknown is threatening. That, it just goes way back to where we were, always were. But the unknown is so much so interesting. It is, know? isn't it? <laughs> when you get a taste for it, it's like, ooh, I love this. It's like when you love hot sauce for the first time. You're like, this needs to be in everything. Uh, <laughs> Gary, what's up? <laughs> yeah, um, well, I just wanted to. I I I'd started reading this book uh, some time ago. It's called Religion Explained, and it's by Pascal Boyer. Um, he's the loose professor of collective memory and individual memory at Washington University in Missouri. A fascinating read, and it really goes into why humans actually came up with, uh, you know, this, they have a propensity for religion. I say they and, even have a craving what, what is the it. basis of it? It's, it's yeah. just, it's an amazing read. So if anyone mm -hmm. is really interested in kind of delving into the nuts and bolts of why religion actually mm -hmm. came to be a thing in the first place, uh, religion explained is a, by Pascal Boyer is a great book. Dread, I'm not going to answer the book for you. So no, hopefully don't let me know if this is a spoiler, but I just feel like humans have a desire to know we have a craving to understand, but when we, but we don't have a standard for the answer that we were given, we have a craving to know, but if we were given a terrible explanation, we'll go with it. <laughs> we'll put it in our pocket and work with it until we can't work with it anymore. And what I wish is we had just as high as an appreciation for standards of evidence as we did for that craving to know. So that way, when we are given an explanation for how something works or how something needs to be, or why we should do a certain thing, we are critical, we are skeptical, and we work together to like figure out better opportunities to move forward with information and with our actions. Because right now, I feel like we just are subservient to misinformation and that has led us to so many a myriad of of, of circles that we've gone through culturally mm -hmm. and and still mm -hmm. are trying to get out of even up to now in my head hmm. won't say it's a spoiler let me know if that's even close but uh, well is, well i just wanted to mention you know so so where i'm at in this book mm -hmm. it, it talks about um you know the the tendency of people to look to other people Mm. Uh, as experts or as specialists mm. and, and that sort of um, 
it's sort of a differentiation, a differentiation that happens in culture and society mm-hmm. where, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, some people gain more money or gain more goods or gain more knowledge. And, and then there's a tendency for people to respect and appreciate that. Right. And then that, that is how, uh, you know, religion kind of came about. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. It's, that's a really, really oversimplification because it's a 300 page book and I've just put that into about one paragraph. So George, go on ahead. Yeah. Um, the thing that I'm thinking about Gary is, is that we have not just one religion in the world, mm. not just the religions that we are familiar with in North America mm. or Europe, but we got a whole bunch of different religions around the world. What do they all have in common? And I think, not being an expert, the, the first thing is that a lot of people gather together and accept each other as, as part of the group and the group as a whole. So it's a social thing. I am it included. Is, I am not excluded when I go to church yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. It, but there's, there's more, interest- obviously. Yeah, not there's an interesting that. point he makes uh, about um, uh, the place of rituals. And that ritual, uh, of course, you find a lot of ritual in religion, but religion is not a necessary part of the performance ritual. So, you know, uh, the, the one is often seen as the cause of the other, when in fact it's the other way around, that ritual happened first, right. and then re- religion kind of formed around it as a justification for performing ritual. What Gary's alluding and to. And the inclusion of supernatural agents and whatnot. Stupid hats existed even before religion. So just because religions right. have stupid hats, which falls into my <laughs> three-tier <laughs> list of, is this religion stupid or not? Dude, can I eat bacon? Do you have stupid hats? And I have and the third one's it's still something I'm working on. It's still a work in progress. We'll make it a one day. But let me eat bacon. Don't let me wear a stupid hat. There should be no stupid hats in this religion. If that's good, your hat's kind of cool. <laughs> your hat is deliberately kind of weird, but it's okay. John, what's up? Don't forget magic underwear. Magic underwear, man. <laughs> that targets. That's that's targeting. That's targeting. Don't don't uh, it's it's a thing though. <laughs> <laughs> That What's up? segues us back to our topic, which yes. is why do we have to wear underwear if this is a finely tuned universe? So why, so, Larry, why do we have to wear underwear if this is a finely tuned universe? Well, because it's not. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's no tuner. There's no tuning. Uh, it just is what it is. And we evolved in it. It's like the, uh, the puddle in the, in the hole on the ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just, we are here because the universe is the way it is. Now, if it, if there are other universes that don't have these settings, then there wouldn't be life. There wouldn't be people saying, why are we here? You know, why is it, why are the settings the way it is? Yeah. We're here because the settings are the way it is. Dread. So we can all, we can all go with, we can all go with no pants then, can't we? Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> so you're, yeah, 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 yeah. Dread, what's up? Well, it, it, it just reminds me of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when the improbability drive uh, transforms uh, the two objects into a, a whale and a flower pot. Yeah. And the whale is talking about its experience as it's, you know, coming to the ground. And then the flower pot says, oh, no, not again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I so Have you guys ever seen, there was a Pixar movie called Soul. I, have you guys have seen that yet? But it plays into the same trope of there's a bunch of souls waiting to come to earth. And oh yeah, there's a yeah, whole line cartoon. of them, and they and they get to choose the person or the personality and all that stuff. Uh, but like, uh, I animated. can imagine a realistic, not a more grounded version of that, where it's like you're a soul in heaven, and God comes up to you and he's like, "Okay, guess what? I made this whole universe for you. It's all fine tuned. I and all you need is one. Here's your body. By the way, it has two eyes in the front so they can watch out for predators." Okay. Second thing, you got a immune system because there's all sorts of things that's going to kill you. Here are your lungs. You need to breathe all the time. Even when you sleep, you must keep breathing or you'll die. 
Uh, don't breathe just any air though, by the way. And I didn't put any filtration systems in your body. So just be in a place where there is air that you can breathe, not, not counting the wa ocean. You can't breathe liquids either. Sorry about that. I didn't figure that out. Just like and we covered one whole the earth in it. Half <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> session with God explained to us. So like, uh, do I, should I be taking notes? It's like, no, 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 no. It's going to be good. You have no notes whatsoever. I'm just going to hope that you're born in a place where the people know how to take care of you. I mean, you, you got at least a 30% chance of being born. <laughs> Unless you're Adam. <laughs> like, <laughs> Unless you're Adam, which I don't know what happened with that guy. I even forgot. I don't know what happened with that guy. Anyway, but I can imagine just the craziest, like little briefer PowerPoint presentation on. So you decide to be a human being on earth. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. Uh, oh man. There's so many different directions. You go. It'd be like one of the most best dark comedies or like the best horror movies altogether. And then it ends and it's just like walk out of the movie theater. Or like, oh yeah, I can't walk into movie theaters anymore because we got COVID. Well, there's your own, there's your additional, <laughs> there's your sequel right there. Uh, but it is a fantastic thing to imagine that we are still here, that we are, that we are old generally, like, like we've survived so many times around this sun, despite the fact that the sun even is trying to kill us and doing its best job possible to heat us from so far away, it's like, why aren't you dead yet? Die already. But uh, UV vision, you guys don't have UV blockers, but you have, I'm, I'm doing nothing but nuclear fission all day long. Why am I not killing you guys? Uh, because the Lord works in mysterious ways. Terribly mysterious, terribly uh, patently, objectively horrible and horrendous outcomes. <laughs> inefficient. And a ridiculously yeah. inefficient. And and but that was the devil responsive and <laughs> and that was the devil. Yeah. So fine tune universe. I would say final conclusions. John Richards. Final conclusions on fine tune universe. Yeah, sure. You mentioned something interesting there about um, how we've got two eyes to look forward for predators. We have to breathe all the time. Well, fortunately we've evolved a subconscious mechanism to keep us breathing all the time so we don't have to think about it and we that enables us to sleep and still wake up but dolphins mm. they don't have that they don't have an automatic or sharks no they don't have an automatic breathing but well, it's important for dolphins because they've got to come up for air yeah it's, um, so they don't have an automatic breathing mechanism. It's a deliberate choice to come up and breathe for them, which means that they can commit suicide. <laughs> they can. Just, yeah. not to, just <laughs> by deciding not to. And this has been observed. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's pretty nuts. This world is so crazy. So crazy world. Um, all right. That was a dark take. Uh, Dread, <laughs> what is your final words on fine tuning aside from suicidal dolphins? Yeah, well, uh, I just wanted to mention here Loma, who uh, watches our show, uh, watches the live stream regularly. He says, uh, fine tuning seems to imply perfection. Is there a difference between perfection and fine tuning? And I suppose even if, it, if the universe is fine tuned, it's clearly not perfect because, right. like you say, we have to wear underwear. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, George Brown, you got final words on fine-tuned universes? Well, boy, um, the history of musical tuning mm. has been of constant change, mm. in fact, that uh, and geographically difference, d different. So uh, what what is considered uh, in tune in New York, let's say, uh, in, in a complete ensemble is different than what's considered in tune in The Hague, Netherlands. And uh, I have experienced that by myself. I won't go into it, but um, in, music, in, in, our, in our experience of music, we do want to hear things in tune, in resonance, very much so. And we don't like it when when we hear it not done that way. Mm. And this is a phenomenon that I think we all agree upon. So to me, as a person who's worked with resonances, I also enjoy paradox, the, the times when it's not true, and I don't understand it. Billie Holiday sang out of tune, and we all love listening. Yeah. We all love listening to her. So what did she do that was different? I can't answer that. 
She sang out of tune well. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Didn't she? With emotion. I got, yes. I got two points I'd like to bring up. One is um, fact is always going to be better than fiction in terms of a storytelling. Uh, fact is always going to be a better storyteller than fiction, believe it or not. And mm -hmm. if you can tell the story well, there's no, there's no, there's no challenge. Uh, it doesn't matter what you come up with. I can pull up a microscope and show you something way crazier in any sci-fi universe that I can come up with on the spot, way better than any Star Wars universe or anything like that. But the thing is, um, if I were to make a comparison that's like more analogous to what I'm talking about, it's sort of like if um, there was a CD album anthology, I don't know if you ever heard of called Kids Bop, which is kids singing classic or alternative modern music so that parents will buy that cover for their kids to listen to. It's kids bops is the third eye blind kids bops rage against the machines kids bop uh, <laughs> green day. And it's just kids uh -huh. singing their classic hits in a choir. It's really terrible. And the music is kind of like lowered down just a little bit. So it's not as extreme. So the kids can sing it in the car as they drive to Disneyland or whatever. In my head, that is, uh, fiction <laughs> kids bop the cd anthology is fiction and the real music that they're basing it off of is fact and if you don't understand it that it, with that breakdown i don't know what else i can tell you but the second thing i bring up is um i can easily make a more fine-tuned more efficient universe anyone can and i think the easiest first step i do is i just make half as many nipples because we got way too many nipples in this universe. And there makes no sense why I have two of them. I, I could have dealt with one, but I got two. And I need, I don't, I won't ever need them in my life. Why do I have them? Why does every, everyone, there are superfluous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more nipples on this podcast show than there are 10 TV. superfluous nipples here <laughs> there's 10 superfluous nipples. get rid of them they take up entropy what are you doing we can get close to a, a heat death universe dread what's up well i was going to suggest that uh because this is this is a really interesting topic but maybe uh, next week or in a coming show we actually talk about also the anthropic principle sure because sure. that is like fine tuning but a little more i think in depth and a different, a different take on the same thing. But, sure, why not? I think it's a, I think it's a good topic. Cool, John. What's up? I see you. Well, I on, see the, you on the subject of nipples, I know we all like to talk about nipples, but uh, it's bilateral symmetry, and of course, other animals don't just have two; they have maybe ten. We could have had zero. That's still symmetrical. But that's a friend what I'm of saying. Mine. We could have had one in the center of our chest. What? Do you, I don't. I don't believe in this bilateral <laughs> symmetry argument because we only have one nose. <laughs> uh, two nostrils. But a friend of mine had three. He had an extra mm. one. And, uh, <laughs> we called him triple nipple. Okay. Mm. Trip nip. Right. Trip nip. Larry, save us. We're at the end of the show. No, well. Well, I was just going to say that uh, for that argument, we. If you talk to most, uh, what is it? people who the doctors who help women have babies mm. uh, they'll tell you that most embryos start off as female and that's uh, probably where the nipples come from yeah. and then over the gestation period it you know because of the chromosomes it will develop into a male or a female right. and they become the but you still have your nipples yeah. you know so it's there's a natural explanation even if there isn't a uh, wait are you saying god started one. off as a woman Yes. Well, did he start off as an embryo? You know, that's the whole thing. Of course, I don't think he's he exists at all, but you know, that's a bone of contention that we have with others. Here's something really controversial then. You could say that women failed to become men. Oh, no. <laughs> or uh, we are an aberration on femalehood. Yeah, we're an aberration <laughs> something like that. on female kind. We're an aberration. Yeah. We're a mutation. Makes more sense that yeah. way in some weird ways, right? Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, what's atheism, Larry? I have no idea what it's about. Well, I do have a book that's tell you what it's all about. It's called Atheism, What's It All About? Nice. It's available on Amazon. <laughs> uh, and you can find uh, other digital free thought stuff on my website, which is digitalfreethought.com. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button uh, for our radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. Uh, if you're looking for a 
podcasts. You can find us on Apple Tunes, Podcasts, um, Pocket Casts, there it is, Amazon, or Podcasts Everywhere. If what you have the, any questions, What are they going to search for to find that? What's the name of that podcast? Oh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, just like this program. Yep. And uh, by the way, uh, if you have any questions for the show, send them to us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. I don't know, is that org? Yeah, org. Uh, or uh, what was your email for your uh, Let's website? Chat SE at gmail.com. Let's chat SE at gmail.com. There we go. By the way, if you're a member of the clergy, a preacher, an imam, or pastor, or priest, but no longer believe the claims of religion, there is help for you at the Clergy Project. That's clergy, clergyproject.org. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody. Bye. 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 Bye